Uh, I'm joined by 2012 All Ireland winner uh, Mark McHugh to talk all about Cavan against Donegal, the Ulster final this weekend. Obviously, like obviously, it's a bit of a family affair, of course, with your with your brother Ryan playing. But even just growing up and your dad, like how old were you when your dad took over the Cavan football job? And obviously, ultimately, he took them to the Ulster title in '97. But do you remember him being manager of Cavan? I, I do and I don't, Shane. Uh, it's kind of it's 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 a very vivid memory. You know, I wouldn't have the best memory when it goes back that that length. Obviously, you have photos and you have videos. There's there's a YouTube clip there. The us, I think, me doing an interview with him after um, after the Ulster final with Marty Morrissey and stuff like that. But uh, it's 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 not uh, it's not something that's really really planted in my memory. But no. Um, you know, dad, dad went up there in 95, so I was only five at that stage. Ryan was just born, like, you know, and I remember dad saying one of the reasons why he actually left Kevin in 97 is because Ryan didn't recognise him when he came through the door, you know, that kind of way, because um, he was uh, he was so young and, you know, obviously being an inter-county manager, you have to put so much time and effort into it, and Kevin being, you know, we would have been two and a half to three hours away from Kevin uh living so there's a lot of days dad would have stayed down and you know he just wasn't about to but you know that's that's what it takes to be an inter-county manager he put all anything he would have did he would have put total commitment time and effort into and um you know if, you know he's he's still very he's still very involved in cabin like you know as a, as well he's lots of friends up there he goes up to watch a lot of the, the club matches and stuff like that and he you know he loves the cabin people what they give him and i suppose they love him for what what they what, what what he gives give to them you know back then because they haven't they haven't won one since so um you know he's uh yeah, you know it's if, 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 if there's any other county i think in in, in ireland bar donegal that he would like to see do well it would be calvin you know and um anytime we play you know he does he does he does go up uh during the week the week before just for a bit of banter and stuff and you go down in the following week for another bit of banter but it's um uh, it is you know, obviously it's a family affair, Ryan, Ryan being involved. But uh, um, yeah, we've 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 some great memories of of Kevin, you know, and, and as, no more so than him. Kevin probably with the second county I'd like to see do well as well, because they're they're just football mad up there. Yeah, and do you have many memories of playing against um, against Kevin while you were with Donegal? I do have a few memories. Yeah, we we played them in two thousand and twelve um, up there in Kevin. Uh, um, uh, Breffney, we played them in uh, a number of weeks. Uh, we played them in 2011 as well. Up there. So there's two years in a row, I think we played them up there, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, hope I'm right about that. I think I am. But uh, I remember the first day, uh, Paddy, Paddy got the, the goal. I kicked him the ball into the goal in 2011. And uh, 2012 was a kind of a different a different game. I remember Michael Murphy was missing that day through, I think through suspension or something. But, um, yeah, I think that was the two. We we, we had big battles uh, against Cavan at underage level, you know, under uh, minor, under 21. They were really, really from middle side at the time. You know, I think there were about five finals in a row. And um, and it's, uh, it, it's, listen, we usually came out the wrong wrong side of it. We beat them in 2010 uh, in the Ulster final. Um, you know, you played like David, David Gibney, Gordon Kiernan, Eugene Keaton and stuff like that. They would have been playing back then. And I, I was in college with the lads at the time. And uh, I remember, I remember beating them. Uh, we went on that year to the Ireland final. We lost in in Breffney Park actually um, against Dublin. But um, yeah, that was a good day. That I remember that that, that game against Cavan. But uh, yeah, so it's mainly it's mainly good days I've had against Cavan. And you know, to be, to be fair to that Donegal team, by taking away maybe a few under 20, 21 things at senior level this last number of years, we played for Cavan only two was it two or three years ago in Balde Fay as well. Um, and uh, we beat them that day, so we've a, we've a, we've a good record against them. Yeah, yeah, there's sort of interesting form lines coming in because Donegal won a narrow game against Tyrone, who would be, you know, in the top six, we'll say in the country anyway, broadly speaking. Whereas Cavan had to go all the way against Monaghan, but they came well from from well behind to win that, and they were one nine to two points ahead dead behind, I think, against Down before coming back. So they're a really dogged side. Obviously, they've good players too, but whereas Donegal. I think beat uh, Armagh handsomely enough. You were probably at that game, were you as well? Like, do you have any it was, thoughts? I was, I was, yeah. and you know you have to. It's, it's that old cliche saying about was was Donegal that good or was Armagh that bad that day? And it's you know it's usually somewhere in in the middle. But um, Donegal were very very impressive. You know you have to say from number one to all the sub number one to twenty nearly whoever came on 
really blew our mind a lot of they know they know answers to them and I was disappointed in our man. You know, I thought they would bring a lot more to the table than they did. They didn't score from play to the forty eighth minute, like, you know, and and and, and any senior game you're gonna play club or county, if you do that, you're not gonna be in with much of a chance. You know, you need to be tip, tip, tipping away. And they were in the game for the first say 12, 13 minutes, didn't take their chances, to, had a lot of wrong uh the shots shot their shot shot selection wasn't good in my in my view and uh, they did a lot of uh, decision making wasn't good either and at that stage of the game where they needed to stay in the game they could have you know they could have opened up maybe a two or three point lead and lead for themselves and just just before the water break and after the water break Donegal went into uh to probably sort of fourth gear and just blew them out of the water and it was, it was probably the game was over at half time but um uh, I was at the Tyrone game as well, and what what really impressed me about the Tyrone game with Donegal was the that 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 I suppose that the, the character, the fighting, the fighting attributes that they, they brought to the game. They can, you know, they were down five one at the start, came back, you know, to go to go ahead. Uh, they conceded the goal then, you know, through it through through an uncharacteristic mistake, and but you know they just pushed it aside, and you know in the past I don't know what that have happened. And uh, they pushed aside, and that was, you know, it was a bad day, a really bad day, and it was hard to come back after conceding a goal like that. But they did, you know, and again they 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 they, they romped home against Tyrone. Uh, Kevin, yeah, you're right. There were eight points down at half time against Down, and seven against Monaghan. So they've been labelled, I think, these comeback kings. And you have to give them that, you know, you're on a bit character, and you have to give them every every, every plotted hey for what what they've done in the last two games. If if I was their opposition, I would be looking more at myself and how you actually let teams like that back into a game. You know, Monaghan would be very, very disappointed and Cavan probably could the goal chances there in the second half to put them away as well and they didn't do it. So you know at that level you have to take them chances. And to be fair to Cavan, they fought and they dug in and both days, you know, this was really um the first the first game was a number uh, I was sitting here watching it with um with Ryan and it was at the, the, the it went to extra time and then the two frees at the end begging kicked the free and we were like right we're, we're going to see penalties here and then Galligan came up and kicked an, an unbelievable kick you know so you have to give them full credit for where they're at and you know even though they got relegated they're in two Ulster finals in a row you know uh, and that and, and that shows that shows progress pro- progress for them and they'll be happy you know Mickey Graham and Darren McCabe is in there and they're doing the, the best job they can and you know listening to them and they're introduced I'm not saying they didn't care about the league, you know, but it wasn't their main focus. Their main focus was that first game against Monaghan, and um, you know they, they they passed that with flying colours. So um, it's, it's 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 obviously it's a funny build up, hey, because it's not uh, you know everybody's there's nobody can go to the games and stuff like that. But it's it's still it's it's going also going for three in a row, which hasn't been done uh, in this county before. So it's a huge achievement probably for both teams. So we will be back in their second one. And Donegal have gone for three in a row. It's a big achievement. But the, the weapons that Donegal have, the fact that McBreer, Paddy McBrearty and Oshin Gallon aren't even starting, they'd be starting in most counties without a doubt. And then, like, Pader Mogan comes in and he looks like a left footed Jack McCaffrey. Kieran Thompson is really <laughs> stepping up. Michael Langan looks unbelievable. And that's before you talk about Michael Murphy, your own brother Ryan, uh, Jamie Brennan. I mean, you have weapons everywhere. They do. And, you know, and, and to be fair to, to be fair, the Donegal squad, uh, or to be fair to the Donegal management team, you know they're a seriously well drilled outfit. They're seriously well coached, and what they brought, I think, this last year is that depth and uh, depth uh, depth within their squad so that they can take these boys off the bench. Uh, that'll just replace the people who are on, and it's you know it's no real it's no real difference. And if you look, you know obviously Dublin, you know this last number of years, you know one of their biggest strengths is their bench, and. You know, if you, if you look at different different games throughout Dublin's uh, five in a row, where teams were with them, say the 50, 55 minutes, and then they start taking on their play, you know, and taking on their bench, and they're just bringing that freshness to it. That's where they kind of creep 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 away from other teams. You know, obviously Kevin McMahon was their their super sub for many years, but they, they were the they were they were the kind of players they were bringing on, and you know, thankfully Donegal have it um have it at the moment with with, with their squad, um. I feel, you know, probably looking over his last, say, say two, three, four years, Donegal could have been labelled a one-man team, a two-man team, you know, and te- and, and teams going out against them would figure out, okay, if you take out Michael Murphy, if you take out Ryan McHugh, you know, if we man-mark them and we keep them quiet, um, we'll, we'll go a long, long way to one in the game. And it was probably that, you know, the way it was done, you know, I was at the game in Mayo last year, 
where we all kind of you know put a lot of um, emphasis on marking you know Keegan. Keegan was on Murphy, you had uh, Paddy Durkin, Rose and Ryan, and they had both you know quite enough days. And Johnny Gall, you know, kind of they they, they looked they, they they had looked to them as leaders, and when they weren't going well, it was hard for the other ones to you know roll in behind them. But that's not the way it is this year, which is you know huge credit to the players, to the management team, that you know take the Tyrone game for example, where Michael Murphy and Ryan McHugh were both well well marshaled. It's not that they didn't they didn't have big games; they both played well. And uh, but they just you know they probably set themselves a very high standard, and but you had other people then stepping up. You had your Michael Langlands, your Kieran Thompsons, your Jamie Brennans, your Hugh McFadden's, your, your Patter Mogans, and uh, that's all positive for Donegal going forward. You know whatever about this year even you know I know there's there's big um, there's there's big talk of Donegal you know challenging the dogs you know they've a big game this weekend for us which they, they, they'll, they'll be focused on that's one thing about Donegal they'll never get ahead of themselves I've been involved in that management setup and they will not let you get ahead of yourself it's game it's game by game so you know complacency doesn't that doesn't doesn't factor in my opinion with within that squad but uh, going forward in the next two or three years to see these to see these players you know developing and uh, becoming their own players and really leading from the front. That's huge positive for running on. Yeah, well, what do you think the impact of Stephen Ratchett has been? Because, you know, when you think about it, he's arguably the most experienced manager left in the competition. Yeah, totally agree, you know, and I kind of, you know, I, I don't really like to ask too much questions about what's going on within the squad to any of the lads, you know, to Ryan or to any of the lads, because, you know, when, when I was involved, you didn't like being asked questions. You didn't like being, you know, because you, firstly, you probably just lie. And then secondly, um, you know, you don't want to be telling anybody and you don't want to be putting anybody in the spot. So, you know, just chatting them on the off season, they've, they've said Rashford has brought so much, you know, to be fair to Declan Bonner, you know, he went out and he seen maybe where, where they needed to work and he brought him in. I, I wasn't involved with Stephen Rashford in the time, you know, but Carl Lacey was there and Paul McGonagall, Gary Boyle, Declan Bonner. You know, Carl Lacey, in my opinion, he's one of the best coaches I've ever had. He's he's so well drilled. He doesn't leave any stone unturned. And, you know, I would imagine him and Rashford working together is just, um, you know, defensive attacking, whatever whatever you want to do, I want to say. But they, they seem to really, really got it right. And it's funny being at games, you know, I'm lucky enough, I'm in the position where I'm doing a wee bit of work for Ocean FM, that I'm, I'm allowed to go to the games. And I'm very grateful for that. But it's funny being at the games now where you don't hear crowds, you can hear a lot more coaching from the sideline. You know, Kieran McGinney was actually just standing right down in front of me the last day. Um, and you could hear everything he was obviously shouting on onto the field. You know, you could hear what Rashford was saying, you could hear what Lacey was saying, and it's just uh, it's it's it's, it's an eye opener. You know, as a, as a young coach myself, like trying to make me make me name in the game, it's 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 it's, a, it's valid it's valid learning. You know, to to see what they're doing, and you wouldn't get that if crowds were at the match. You know, you, they would be shouting obviously, but you wouldn't hear it. So, um, as I said, Donny Gall, in my opinion, are such a well drilled uh, outfit. Like they're. As I said, they're like a wash machine. They just keep going round and round. Like the Tyrone game, if something happens, if something happens that you know it's, it's a mistake, mistakes happen. Move on. Next ball. Next ball. Next ball. And it's down to the fine tee with them. You know, even you know they're breaking ball in the middle of the field. I go back there. You know, obviously I would say you watched the last dance, did you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you had you had you you, you seen Dennis Rodman, how he studied Michael Michael Jordan's. Um, rebounds off, you know, the way he shot and the way he, he would be, he knows the way it was going to rebound off the basket or off the board or whatever, he'd be in that position. Like, you know, you know, I'd imagine teams are doing that right now, you know, they they might they, they look they study kickouts, they study who's going to break the ball, where it's going to break to. And uh, you know, that just doesn't happen that you're in the right place all the time. Players learn this. They they, they take take techniques off their two midfielders or the two half forwards or something like that. And uh, as I said, there's no stone left on torn. I'd imagine with that doing all set up right now, and it's you know it's, it's as I said, it's so, it's so positive. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's positive going forward for Donegal definitely in the next number of years. Yeah, and obviously without giving away the game plan or anything like that. When you hear these managers shouting in at the moment, do you think is it are they actually changing formation tactics stuff like that mid flow? And can you see that the teams are reacting maybe more than they they would have when there's crowds there? Yeah, well, a lot of you know, you know, coaching, coaching has gone on on the field for for a number of years. We just never, we never heard it. You know, obviously, I played at a high level where you you, you get direction from a manager or a coach and you do it. But like nobody probably within within the whole stadium realizes what you're doing. Uh, but when you're at the games, you, you of course, you know, they they plan A, they plan A, they plan B, they plan C. We're going to try this 
for five minutes of a game. We're going to try this for ten minutes of a game. We're going to, you know, change our setups, and that there's been been laid out to the players. And it just we, you know, when they're roaring on the field, of course you can hear it, you know. And if, if you pick up on it, you'll, you'll be able to see it. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything. There've been either any team was saying, but um, you know, that's that that's just the nature of the game, and it's just the way it is this year with, with no crowds. Yeah, and and this weekend, then, are you expecting Donegal to see it through, or are there things you're worried about from from Cavan? Yeah, listen, yeah, yeah, you know, it's Cavan's a gritty, gritty team, you know, and as I said, um, they they fought back in every time. Now, I I can't see if Cavan give Donegal the lead to, to give Monaghan, if they give the lead to give uh, down to Donegal, I think it's game over. You know, I have to have to. I don't. I can't see Donegal, you know, getting complacent or they'll they'll you know they'll just be able to. Uh, they'll be able to suss it out and see it out. You know, you could see the way that the game against our man was going to go. The game was over at half time. Donegal were very patient. They let our man come on to them and they tapped away easy scores. And, you know, it's probably something like that. Cavan against Monaghan, I was shocked as in they left it so long to press up in the, uh, up in the Monaghan kick out. You know, um, I couldn't see a way back to them even with maybe, you know, 10 minutes to go. They only decided after the second water break will push up and that's how they nearly go back in the game. Do Cavan give Donegal their kick out? You know, as I said, Kieran McGinney was in front of me. Um, and he was just shouting at his shouting at his players. You know, I don't mind giving away our mass tactics, but <laughs> he was shouting at his players about watching over the top. You know, they were really worried about Donegal over the top. So what was happening was Donegal was just picking out short short, short kickouts. They were getting they were getting their end of the game, they were getting on possession. And then, you know, they had to make a decision then to push up in their kickouts. And we've seen what Sean Patton, who's been a huge plus for Donegal over the last number of years, what what he can do then is take the Tyrone game where he Brief the ball down 60, 70 yards, we get a goal from it. And that's that's totally, you know, that's, that's what Donegal has in armour. So does Cavan make a decision, right? We'll give them the kick outs, we'll let them come on to us, we'll try to break them down, we'll get numbers back. Uh, or do we try to go up, do we, do we try to take them take them on man to man, stop their short kick outs, and then hope, you know, that we, we, we try to get back? So um, Cavan can't give Donegal a lead to, to, to give another team, in my opinion. But, um, you know, it'll be it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I, I do I do think though Shane, you know, going on form, you know, as I said, Cavan were 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 relegated division three and they were playing probably weaker teams. So no more so than the Armagh thing I said before the Armagh game. It's hard to beat that there, you know, division one. Uh, when you're playing against the top teams in the country, your Kerry's, your Galway's, your Mayo's, your Dublin's, your uh, and it's very it's very hard to beat that, you know, and Donegal had that obviously at the start of the league and then there was the break and at the end of the league so um, just for pure intensity of them games and just what Donegal have at the minute um, if you look back to last year's game you know Cavan have lost a number of players from them and in my opinion this is, this is again it's only my opinion Cavan probably have are not as good as a team as they were last year where Donegal are probably a, a bit better and Donegal you know I think it ended up maybe a you know, four or five point game last uh, last last year, but it was it was turning all with totally control the whole game. It was you know a four or five point hammer, if you want to say that. So going on that game and the way Donegal are playing this year, yeah, I can't see anything but uh, Donegal won. But as I said, there'll be no complacency within the squad. They'll be just looking at this game, getting over it, and then um, you know uh, whatever happens after that happens. Yeah, and then one final question: Do you think there's much difference between Donegal, Mayo, Dublin? Are Dublin still number one, basically? Yeah, of course they are. They're, they haven't been beat. So, you know, Dun uh, Dublin, you know, you can... Uh, Dublin were trying a lot of new things, obviously. The new manager, the new uh, back, uh, back, backroom team, whatever, you know, since Jim Gavin left. And they've been trying new things throughout the league. So you can't really, you know, go on too much depth to them. Uh, they've been, you know, the two games they played already, West Mead and Leash. Um, you know, they were very comfortable in both games, they control both games. So the Dublin are have been and are at that level this last number of years. It takes it takes the carries, the Donegals, the drones and males, whatever you, you know, to get to that level. Now Donegal are definitely going in the right direction. Are they at that level yet? I'm I'm not hundred percent sure and we'll not know until till we actually if, if we get to play them or not. Um but it's I'll I'll say that it's probably the gap is closing a wee bit, you know. Um, but yeah, Dublin are still number one, and they will be number one until until they're beat. The only good thing about it is it's done all to beat them last, so that's one positive for us. It is indeed. All right, brilliant stuff, Mark. Really appreciate you joining me. Good man, Shane.